Hello everybody, it's been a while since we've done a lesson at Hack Club, but I hope you guys have been doing well. <clears throat> and for the last two months of the school year, we're going to be learning Python and competitive programming, more specifically the CCC, which is a contest that happens annually at our school, and it's definitely something you guys should be interested in, especially if you want to go to uh, Waterloo, for example. Alright, so the first step you have to do to prepare for this lesson is you want to go to python.org slash downloads and download Python 3. This is what we're going to be using uh, for these lessons. Um, you can do it on any IDE you want, but when you download Python, it automatically comes with the Python IDE. So when you search up Python, it's called idle. And when you open this, it will open a file like this. And it's basically where you can edit and create your own uh, Python programs. So let me just show you that in action. All I have to do is click the idle Python and I click it. It opens up something like this, which is called a shell. This is where the output and input and everything happens. But to actually make a new file, click a new file. And then you will have this place where you can edit and write all the code you want and then you can save as somewhere on your computer to run it later but i already have one open and it's called j12021.py which is how we name python files okay so you might be wondering what is j121 uh 2021 well it's actually one of the questions from the CCC this year. In fact, it's one of the junior questions, which takes us to the second website that we're going to be using, which is DMOJ, or as I like to call it, DMOJ. So what DMOJ is, it's basically this online judging tool that allows um, your code to be judged and scored instantly, as if you were actually in the real CCC contest. This is exactly how the CCC will work as well. All you would do is you would have to uh, enter your code, you would submit a file or you would copy and paste it, and then the code and the actual website will automatically grade it and give you a grade. So to access the CCC questions, first of all, you have to make an account, and I have an account right here. But make sure you make an account and you go to problems. Then once you have problems, you can see a bunch of different uh, coding competitions and just uh, problems that you can do uh, for free and for fun just out of pleasure but for the purposes of this you might be wondering you want you probably want to do the CCC because a lot of you guys are interested in that and that's what happens at our school so all you have to do is just search the CCC and then once you have searched CCC you will see all of the CCC questions starting from 2000 and you can see that there's different types of questions as well. Uh, for example, CCC J1, CCC J2, CCC S1 and CCC S2, S2, S4, S5. Basically what this means is that in the actual CCC, there is a junior contest and a senior contest. J1 means the first question of the junior contest. J2 means the second question of the junior contest. And S1 is the first question of the senior contest and so on and so forth. Okay, so there's a bunch of different questions you can try out if you're a beginner uh, as I'm expecting a lot of you guys probably are watching this video just for today we're going to start with the J1 question which is a junior one question it's going to be really easy and we're actually going to navigate our way all the way to 2021 which was the question the first junior question that was there for this year and it's called boiling water CCC 21 J1 great all right, so over here we are immediately seen with the question and the first thing you'd want to read is the actual question itself. Sometimes there's a bunch of fluff in here, but try to make sense of the question. There's usually an equation that they give you or information and variable names that you will probably have to use. And then the important part is the input specification and the output specification. So the input is going to be whatever is going to get inputted into the program and the output is whatever you're going to print out. And basically to win the contest and to get the highest amount of points, you have to mimic what happens over here. For example, if the program inputs a 99, your program's going to have to input a 95 and a 1. Where did these numbers come from? Well, that's how you're supposed to find it out from the actual question. So as you can see here, you can read it on the screen for yourselves. <coughs> but 
basically what it's asking us to do is calculate the atmospheric pressure when the computer gives you the temperature at which water begins to boil and you can calculate the pressure through this equation here so right off the bat we can see so the input is one line containing an integer b which is the boiling point so the b over here and then the output is going to be an integer where the atmospheric pressure is measured in kpa well p is the atmospheric pressure measured in kpa so we'd be outputting p and the second line must contain integers negative one zero or one and this integer represents if you're at sea level below sea level or above sea level so if this seems a bit confusing you can just read the question and it says as you go above sea level atmospheric pressure decreases as you go up below sea level, atmospheric pressure increases. And then at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 100. So right off the bat, you can see that our input is going to be B. And then we're going to want to output P once we put it into this kind of equation. And after that, we're going to try to decide which number to output, negative 1, 0, or 1, based on what the P is. If the P is 100, it's 0. If the P is uh uh, below 100 that means you're going above sea level so it's going to be 1 and if the p is above 100 well that means we're below sea level so we're going to output negative 1 and right off the bat we can kind of see our program forming in our head we're realizing that we're going to first output something with a regular calculation and then we're going to have to use some sort of if else statement to do the rest so that's exactly what we're going to do so we'll open up the file and all you have to do is you can even just use the variables that the actual uh, problem gives you, but you don't have to. But for the purpose of this, it just makes it a lot more easier. So B is the temperature. So B is the input that the computer is going to give you. So, all right, so B, I'm going to declare a variable in Python. All you have to do is just do B and you do equals to, and then whatever the uh, person is going to type in or the in this case the judger is going to type in we don't know what this number is it's just going to be an input so to access user input in python all you have to do is just do input like this and then put two brackets like that and that's it but then again we have to realize that well we're going to be doing math with this we're going to have to multiply by 5 minus 400 and the input function just gives us a string which as you recall from the java lessons is just text right we can't actually add with text so we're going to have to convert it to an integer and to do that all we have to do is just do int and then bracket whatever we want to convert into an integer and basically what this code is doing is it's going to take input and then whatever is in that input is it's going to get converted to an integer and it's going to store it in the variable b so we can do the math later now that's great because we can calculate the p which is going to be the first line of our output as seen here so p really all we have to do especially since we made the variable name the same thing is just copy this line here that's why python is extremely simple is we can just multiply in the same way however there is a problem with this line of code and that is x is not a real operator you have to use the asterisk key to do multiplication all right so now we have our equation we got the input the input into the equation and we get the p so the first line just wants us to print that p so to output it onto the screen, all you have to do is a print and then P. And this is going to display the P on the screen. So before we even get to the next part, let's just check to see if our, if our program is running. So let's do run and then we click run module. Click OK. And then this pop-up appears. And then you might not see anything, but you got to remember this. You have to first put an input in. So when we look at the sample input and this output here, we want to make sure it matches. So if we put in 99, the first line should be 95. So let's try this right now. I put 99. Boom. The first number is 95. So that's satisfying. Just double check if it works again. I'm going to input 102. And the output, as it shows here, should be 110. So I put 102, I get 110, which is perfect. Now to the next part, which is determining the second number, whether it's above, below, or up, or at sea level. Well, all you'd have to do is make an if else statement, obviously. So you would have to do if, and then you can compare the boiling point if you want, because the boiling point is at 100, and then it shows you, you know, water boils boils at lower temperatures. But really, we can even just do it with our pressure as well. It doesn't really matter. So in this situation, I'm just going to choose pressure. If P is less than 100, as it shows here, so uh, if P is less than 100, 
that means the atomic pressure is decreasing, which means we are going above sea level. So we do this. It automatically indents for us, and then we're going to want to print. If we're above sea level, we have to print one, as the program did say. And we don't need to notice we don't have to convert it to an integer because we're not going to do any math with these numbers anyways. So there really is no point in doing that. And then we want to do another case, which is uh, if p is less than 100, as if it's going down, that means that we're going to be going, uh, or sorry, if p is greater than 100, uh, we're going to be going above sea level, which means we have to print out, or below sea level, so we're going to have to print out the negative one, as specified here. Well, to do this, we can't just necessarily do if, else, and then do this, rather we have to do else if, because there's another case that we're going to have to use for else, which is if the thing is actually at sea level. All right, so here's the thing. Python doesn't actually take else if as a real condition. They actually shorten it to elif, which is the, means the exact same thing as else if. And what elif does is you can create another parameter, which means p is greater than 100, then uh, we're actually going below sea level so we print out this and then else uh, we print out zero which means the only possible thing if it's not below or above 100 it is 100 but you know if even if you're not uh, familiar with that and you want to be safe you can just do this as well p equals 100 but you know else is just good uh, measure so you want to put this as well and then print zero and now we can test our code and once again you can use the same sample input and output so put 99, boom, we got 95 and 1, which is exactly what the output is supposed to be. Uh, let me do this again. Let me run module. I see 102. I'm going to put 102. I got 110, negative 1. Boom, that's exactly what it is. I did all of the cases. If you want to double check even more, you can even do the regular case, which is the 100. If I put 100 in, it should be 0, and I should get 100 kPa. And yep, that's exactly what it is as well. So now that I'm really confident about my code, I can submit the solution. And this is where dmodg is extremely useful. I know my code is correct. Even if I don't know my code is correct, I can still submit it and see how much points I would get. So let me just submit solution. And it does take a while to load, so bear with me. And then you can see here, you can type your code directly here. But what's the point of typing it directly here if you can't see the question? But at the bottom, you can select what language you're using. Uh, you know, if you wanted to do this with another language, that's fine with us too. Uh, but, you know, for what we're teaching, we're teaching Python 3. So we set it at Python 3. And here's where you can output your code. And we're just going to copy and paste what we already have over here. Make sure nothing like messed up. Everything still seems the exact same. And there's no place to run, unfortunately, here to double check anything, but you can just submit it. And when you submit it, you will see that there's a bunch of test cases. And the test cases are basically, you know, the different types of input that the uh, judger is doing for you. It's inputting numbers like 100, 105, blah, blah, blah. And it's basically telling you if it's correct or not. And I got correct on every single thing. So my final score is 15 out of 15. So I got perfect. All the test cases were correct. And um, yep, it was literally perfect. And now I have this on my profile. I can go on my profile. I can see all of the things that I've ever done. I can view my submissions. Boiling water, I got 15 out of 15. And here's a bunch of my previous submissions as well. So if you guys want, you guys can be competitive if you want. Uh, add each other as friends, make your own usernames, and see what you guys are doing, and just collect as many points as possible. Okay, so for homework, all you have to do is submit your solution for CCC20J1 called Dog Treats. That's all you got to do. Just complete this question and submit it on Dmodge. And what you're going to uh, give to us on the Google Forms is a screenshot of either your code or a perfect score on Dmodge, either one. So if you got a perfect score on Dmodge and you already did it over there and Dmodge already checked it for you, uh, just send us like your perfect score screen. Uh, or you can just send us like a screenshot of your actual code if you want, and we will know if it's correct or not because we've already done this question before. And just for some hints, in case you guys are stuck, over here it's asking us for three lines of input. So remember to get input, we use the input bracket. We're going to have to do that three times for three different variables in a row. So just a hint for that, and it's going to be the same logic as before in terms of outputting this and using an if statement to see if the dog is happy.
All right, guys. So hopefully you get hopefully you guys don't find this too hard, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in the next lesson. Bye.